guess where I am? I'm up at Lutherdale, and I'm going to read you another story. This one is one of your favorites. It's called Interesting Broccoli. The interesting thing about broccoli is that there are four interesting things about broccoli. Number one, nobody knows how to spell it. Not even the people who wrote the Oxford English Dictionary know how many C's or how many L's there are. Number two, nobody really likes it. Not even the man who eats everything, including garbage, trash, rubbish, and street litter. And number three, no matter how long you boil it, it's always cold by the time it reaches your plate. Number four, it's green. Okay, so the last one wasn't very interesting, but I can only think of good ones. Anyway, this story isn't about broccoli. It's about a boy with four heads. I'm only joking. It's actually about broccoli. The interesting thing about broccoli is that there are four interesting things about broccoli. Oh, sorry, I've already done that bit. Let me start again. Once upon a time, there was a boy with four heads. He grew up and became the man with four heads. He became very keen on all sorts of food and soon became known as the man with four heads. Uh, the man with four heads with, who eats everything, or MWF, H-W-E-E -E for short. Having four heads meant that he could look north, south, east, and west all at the same time. Unfortunately, this meant that the sun was always in his eyes. However, he could see, always see if a cat was trying to creep up on him from behind or from the side. He wasn't keen on cats playing practical jokes, but he was keen on food. One day, he was eating an egg carton with his north-facing head, a tin can with his south-facing head, an old magazine with his east-facing head, and a bacon sandwich with his west-facing head. When he turned around, his north-facing head became his south-facing head, his south-facing head became his north, his west became the east, and the east became the west, and then he turned back again. After his meals, he sat down on the park bench and dozed off. Then, Felix the Fluffy crept up, Felix and Fluffy, crept up behind him and covered him with broccoli pudding. <laughs> don't worry if you don't know what broccoli pudding is, because neither do I. About two hours later, M-W-F-W-H-E-E -E woke up and was surprised to find himself covered in broccoli pudding. You might remember that the second most interesting thing about broccoli is nobody likes it. Not even the man who eats everything, including garbage, trash, rubbish, and street litter. So he was not too pleased that he was going to have to eat himself out of this mess. Luckily, with four mouths, he was able to eat all the broccoli pudding at the quarter of the time it would have taken a normal person with the normal number of heads. He then set off to find the two naughty little kittens that were responsible. He found Felix and Fluffy outside the pet shop. Felix had shreds of broccoli on his paws, and Fluffy had pudding mixture on his whiskers. Have you seen any cats messing about with broccoli pudding, he asked. No, they said. We're good cats. The two cats then went into the pet shop and opened all the cages. The shopkeeper was furious, and he watched all his animals run into the street, including six rabbits, half a dozen puppies, five hamsters, another hamster, and about six white mice. Three of the mice were blind, and the other three wore contact lenses. They ran and they ran until they escaped the dangerous traffic and the busy streets and reached the safety of the countryside. They came to an old farmhouse and went into the kitchen. Standing by the cooker was a large woman with a large knife. He was looking around for more ingredients to put into their mouse tail soup. Just then, Farmer Venison walked into the room with his tummy. It was rumbling. He had eaten nothing since breakfast and was looking forward to his dinner. Farmer's wife was just about to cut the tails off the three mice when the farmer announced that he wanted to be a vegetarian and he would never eat meat again. So the mice ran off and the farmer had broccoli toast instead. <laughs> don't worry if you don't know what broccoli toast is because neither do I. Farmer Venison was a keen gardener and whenever he wasn't in his fields looking after plants, you'd find him in his garden looking after plants. His favorite plant was the stinging nettle, because he liked to put some in his wife's hat every morning. He had just got used to this, or he had got used to the silly practical joke and always remembered to check her clothes before putting them on. 
One morning, the farmer decided to, to think up a new joke. So he sat at the kitchen table with a pen and paper, thinking hard and scribbling away. Eventually, he came up with the brilliant idea of filling his wife's best hat with a chocolate milkshake. His timing couldn't have been worse, however, as today was the day that the Queen of Bulgaria was due to visit their farm. So the farmer's wife put on her best frock, which was made of fine silk, gold buttons, diamond chains, and various bits of plastic. She then checked that her hat was clear of stinging nettles and put it on her head. This caused two pints of chocolate milkshake to fall all over her dress. This caused her to scream in horror. This caused the farmer to laugh. This caused the farmer's wife to throw a chair at the farmer. Just then, the doorbell made a ringing noise. The queen, the queen, screamed the farmer's wife. She's here, and, took, and look at the state of me. It wasn't the queen, it was the postman. He had a letter from the queen that said she wouldn't be coming to the farm. In fact, the queen was still back home in Bulgaria. She was unable to travel as her clothes had been ruined by the king of Bulgaria playing a practical joke with her crown and a vat of flavored yogurt. So now we're coming to the end of the story, and I hope you've learned an important lesson. Jokes aren't funny. They ruin people's clothes. M-W-F-W-H-E-E -E never did find who was responsible for the broccoli pudding incident. The two cats carried on being naughty until one day they tried to break into a bank. It turned out to be a prison, not a bank, <laughs> and they couldn't escape. The six mice lived happily ever after in the broccoli field, and after six attempts, Farmer Venison eventually succeeded in giving up being a vegetarian. He was unable to give up practical jokes, though. Mrs. Venison went shopping for a new dress, some milkshake, and a chair. She never did meet the Queen of Bulgaria. The end. So here's a few questions to see if you've been listening. What happened when the man with four heads who ate everything fell asleep on the park bench? <laughs> That's right. Two naughty cats came up and put broccoli pudding all over him. What animals escaped from the pet shop? There was lots of them, do you remember? Hmm. Let's see. I think it was six rabbits, a half a dozen puppies, five hamsters, another hamster, and about six white mice. Why did Farmer Venison like stinging nettles? That's right, he liked to put them in his wife's hat. It's pretty funny. Why did the Queen of Bulgaria stay at home? Yep, yogurt in her crown, put there by the King of Bulgaria. What's the important lesson we've learned from this story? Yeah, broccoli isn't very interesting, but I think it's more that we shouldn't play practical jokes. They're not very funny. Now, here's a question for you to think about. What would you like? Would you like to pour some milk in somebody's socks tomorrow? <laughs> I think you would. Well, that's your story for tonight. I hope you guys had a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.